Hey guys, in the process of trying to figure out that problem I was having the other day um, with that ring, I came across a new tool called Array Curve Plus. This has changed the way that I will lay out stones from now on. And as such, I figured I'd do a quick tutorial video to help you get your feet wet with it. He has some videos on his site, but uh, this will hopefully save you from all the fumbling I did when I first opened it up. There's another tool out here called Armadillo, which looks like it would be pretty powerful as well. I haven't jumped into it yet, but it is now on the to-do list. So let's jump over here to Rhino and I'll show you how to get started. First thing, go ahead and call Array Curve Plus. And all the options are not available when you just call the command. You need to get it set up and then afterwards you can adjust things. So I'm going to haphazardly run through everything. The base surface is optional and it's just using the normals from the base surface to orient the objects that you're arraying around the curve. For this I want it so that they are all facing the finger rail but other examples I may not. I picked the base point kind of randomly and that's why they're sticking out over here on the side. Now that I'm in the command I can come over here and tell it that I have not an item which is a group of items but multiple groups of items. So let's define my first group of items. I want the prongs to be on the outside of the stone, so that's gonna be the first group. I'm gonna pick this object and that object and right click and say that is my first, what it calls item. It creates this kind of bounding box around it and forgive me, my 3D space mouse uses whatever is selected as the point to rotate the camera around and it cannot figure out while this command is running what I have selected and not but there is a point in the middle here there it is that is right in between both prongs and on the base uh, this is sitting on the seaplane although the seaplane wouldn't matter it's the bounding box is the very bottom of this object the other group of items I have is a stone and a bezel and again, I'm going to find its bottom center point. And that will be what lines up along the finger rail. So I'm going to say I don't have a third group and it will lay them out for me. And using the base surface as the normal, it's going to orient them all flat on my finger rail. And the next thing I need to do is tell it where on this curve I want them to start and stop. So I'm gonna come over here to path and say ends adjust. I find it easier to move these guys, oops, right click to release the one that you were working with so that you can click on the next one. I find it easier to move these guys out of the way so I can pick the points on the curve that I want. If you see here, it's hard, it, it's going to grab the object snaps of the other objects and kind of make it a little confusing. But once they're out of the way, I can come over here and find the quad point of the curve, there it is, and set my endpoint, right click, grab the start, and it's also telling me which direction it goes between the start and end. Uh, when I move them out of the way, I can see it a little bit clearer. So there we go, now they flow from uh, nine to three, if we were looking at the clock. Next, spacing. The spacing algorithm this uses is completely different than all of the array curve and array curve on surface algorithms that Rhino uses, and this is a good thing. I really like the spacing algorithm of this because it's using separate groups. For example, this top halo was laid out with this tool. Normally when I lay something like this out, it's very difficult, not very difficult, but it's a pain in the butt to get your prongs perfectly spaced between your cups. You have to do that all by hand. With this, the prongs are always directly between each object that you have. Even if the cups are a different size, the prong is always going to be in the middle of them. Uh, that is very, very useful to me. The downside, or the only caveat is, I should say, I don't really know if it's a downside, the spacing that you're going to be using when you're laying out anything that overlaps is fit because if you use a numerical value for the spacing it's going to make sure that these are all one millimeter away using a bounding box 
that's great if I was laying out just stones and I wanted the stones to be a quarter millimeter apart, but not good if I've got bezels that need to intersect with the prongs. So to figure out the spacing, I'm going to jump to an orthographic view. I'm going to tell the spacing to go back to, and you can't use the negative. I should have showed you. See, it says spacing must be greater than one. I'm going to go back to fit and then just adjust the count to get them to overlap. So the count for this right now is 15, and it looks like I need to double it, so I'm going to jump to 30. And then my stones up here are off of the Y and the prong is directly on the Y. So for down here, I want to offset that where the stone is directly on the Y and the prongs are on either side of it. 30, neither the prong nor the stone is lined up on the Y, so let's go to count 31. Now the stone is lined up, but if I look at the spacing here, these this is one millimeter grid, it looks like I've got a half millimeter space between my stones. That is not good, so let's increase the spacing to 32. Again, neither is laid is aligned on the Y. It's directly in between the two. Count 33. And now the prong is on. So every other one, either the stone or the prong is going to be on the Y axis. The um, even values, neither one will be on the axis. So I'm going to jump to 35. And there we go. Now the stone is laid up on the y-axis. The culet is directly on. We're all good. Let's take a look at it. And my stones are laid out with the right spacing. Now it's flat against the finger rail. I am not a fan of laying out any stone completely flat. If you look at the halo up here, I've got probably a 15 degree curve, uh, 15 degree rotation on them, so that they're not looking. They they don't look flat. I need to adjust this to blend in with the halo and I want these prongs to touch the halo in such a way as it supports it adds some additional support to the halo as well so let's jump into the rotation commands and there's two modes here one is an incremental angle so each object group will start at your start angle and then increase by whatever whatever you specify here for the angle property, it will increase, add or take away from your start angle. Or you can pick an end angle and say 90 degrees. And then on one, oh, you gotta click done for it to update. And then over here, this prong is 90 degrees in relation to the normal of our space surface. And over here, it started at zero, so this is laying flat on our base surface. But that's a little too extreme, so I'm going to back that down by a little over half and jump to 40. Click done. And if I look at it from an orthographic view, I can see the angle of this and the angle of that, and that blends well with each other. I'm not so much I'm not concerned at all about the other side, how it's over rotating here, because I'm going to chop off everything from the center over and mirror around. <clears throat> That's easy enough to control. There's ways I could control it with this program uh, or this plugin, I should say. For example, I could use a control curve. And what a control curve will do is allow me to map out my rotation based on a control curve. I don't have a control curve. I'm already in the command. If I leave and come back in, then I'll have to start back over again. There is no pause. But that's why he gave us this little utility called command mode, where in command mode, I can access Rhino. Now for a control curve, it uses XY values to determine the, there's gonna be a min and a max value. The lowest point on our Y is going to be the min and the highest point is going to be our max. And the X values is going to be is going to map to the length of our path curve. So for this, I'm going to go rapidly up, stay up there, and then go rapidly down, stay down there, and eventually taper off. So this will show me my min value, my max value, 
and the start and end. These other commands, you can have multiple paths. So you could do update selected or update all. It doesn't matter which one I select here. I'm going to do update all so I don't have to pick that particular path curve. But um, you can change the objects that you're arraying. You can modify them here and then click update all and it will update this as it goes. The only thing you can't change is your path curve. It would be really nice to be able to change your path curve because I had to run this twice. Um, the first time I did it, this curve that I used for my curve to view, I projected out my finger rail over to here. I had it a little bit too extreme and this prong was not touching the halo at first. So I had to stop it. Re I sat here and used the command mode to get the distance that I wanted to change it by. Exited the command, adjusted my curve, re-curved to viewed it out here, and then ran it again, and I was good to go. I wish I would have been able to adjust the path curve while the command is running, but it must have been a pain in the butt if he excluded that specific object from being able to be modified during command mode. I have not done anything to change uh, an object that that this plugin is currently aware of. I just drew a control curve, so I don't need to update any. I can just click done. And then for my path, I can say control curve, and I want to adjust the scale. You can adjust the scale non-uniformly. I can adjust the scale, set a min and max value. So let's make it go from 0.8 to 1.5, and then assign our control curve. And so we should be in the middle here, jump to our max, jump to our min, and then go back to the middle. So if we look at this, we're in the middle, we jump to a max, immediately jump to a min, and then taper off back to our middle value. And if I don't like it, I can go back into command mode, turn points on, edit this control curve, and get it to be exactly how I want it to be. I don't need it, so I'm going to remove the control curve and get back to what we were looking at. And there we go. All right, other commands in here that are very useful is scaling. I want all these to be the same size, but up here on this top halo, if we take a look at it, you can see that this stone is bigger than that stone. Normally, when I would lay out uh, a halo, I want my corners to kind of be matched up. So right now I have a prong on each corner, which is exactly what I wanted it to be. I would normally adjust the spacing between the stones and start over with some different size stones, go back and forth, back and forth until I got it to line up just exactly how I wanted it to. Using this scaling, you can set key values and I'll change the scale on this to 1.5. And now, um, so for the top, I set a key here and a key there. Key here and key there, key there, key there. And if we look at these values, you can see I have one key value there. One, it adjusts to 1.5, and then it stays 1.5 because I don't have another key value. So setting a key on each of the two cornerstones this was 0.9, this was 1.1, and all the stones in between were 1.1. It allowed me very quickly to get uh, these prongs lined up on the corner. I don't need that for this one, so I can just click back on that key, remove that node, and now they're all back to 1. If I would have done it on the other end, and done that as 1.5, it would gradually adjust from one all the way over to there. So <clears throat> very cool that you can uh, adjust the scaling on this thing. Oop, let me get rid of that. Remove node. And now they're all back to one. So all of them are one or two millimeter stones. When you get done, all you have to do is click on create. And you're done. Very cool, very useful little tool. I am very thankful to have found it. Now I just have to lop all these guys off and mirror it around. 
I hope this uh, helps you guys get started using this tool. I definitely recommend it, and uh, I'll see you guys back on the forum.